the hate army troll. It's the hate army, bro. Hate army. Shout that out guy. to hate. hate. Army. Good vibes to the Shout hate out to army. Hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out for Shout hate. Out for hate. <laughs> Before we get to shout outs and other things, I will say one thing because I have recently, well, not really recently, in the last few months to year, I've started to kind of describe myself as a YouTuber and a online creator a little different. I've been saying the statement, okay, that I've been making curated content for my audience. And I think a lot of people don't really understand what that means. What does it mean to make curated content versus just being a content creator in general? Because there's a lot of people out there on YouTube and, and on the internet in general. It doesn't have to be YouTube, it's Twitch and other places. And I feel like what they do is they try to make content that is more towards a generalized, open viewer base. What does that mean? These people make content that is supposed to go along trends, memes, hype, and that means they have to follow all of the common methodologies of content creation to try to get attention, all right? These people are heavily reliant on a mass consumption of their content in order to be successful. You understand that these kind of people have to constantly be pumping out content that is viral in order to really get noticed and make a living. They also have to then, because of their viral popularity, accept a bunch of things like product placements, um, advertisement campaigns, sponsorships. This is how they end up making seven figures, a lot of these people, okay? Um, I'm not like that, as you know. I'm not making content that I feel would be digestible to a mainstream wide audience. I, I don't aspire to do that. I hate to say it, but in the last 15 years that I've been a YouTuber, I've seen the audience on this site completely degrade. It went from people who originally, when I started on YouTube in 2009, 2008-ish even, it was people who were positive and eager to watch free content and absorb information. They were open-minded. They were grateful that anyone would be putting out content for them because this was a new avenue for them to get free entertainment and or lots of knowledge at their fingertips you know it was a new thing to be able to jump on your computer and watch youtube and wow i can see a video game playthrough i can see a review of a game from someone who's not a shill and actually has nothing to gain by saying it's good or bad they just are honest i can laugh at them when they do funny projects vlogging and stuff like that it was a different experience you know today there is such oversaturation in that market and there are so many people who have jumped on again the content creation bandwagon that in order to be successful in general, you just have to be like everybody else. You have to follow those same trends, the same viral popularity kind of memes. You have to do that. If a new hot viral game comes out, you have to play it. If you don't, you miss the bandwagon and you just missed out on a ton of popularity and attention and views and money that you could have made. If you don't jump on a new product everyone's trying, the new piece of food that everyone's taste testing, if you're not memeing about the new drama on the internet or the new political thing or whatever it may be, because everyone's a different kind of content creator, you basically can't win, right? But what I've been trying to express to you guys, <clears throat> all right, over the last several years, which I think a lot of people don't understand, is that I'm not like them, and I never aspired to be. When I started on YouTube in 2008, it was a silly hobby. It wasn't anything that I ever thought would grow into anything serious. I wasn't trying to make videos that were going to go virally popular and get millions of views and make me rich. I never cared about that. You understand? There's literally people on this site that all they do is make content to make them rich, and that's all they care about. As long as it pays me, I don't even care what it is. I don't care if it's useful, harmful, positive, negative. As long as there's money lining my pockets because I made it, that's all I care about. That's how these people act and, and behave. And that's toxic and wrong and very harmful, in my opinion, to the people at large on this planet. But no one really regulates anything. They just let them do whatever they want and continue to make the shitty, harmful content that they make. That's messed up. You know, people out there under the guise of being good guys, but really they're putting out really harmful stuff and everyone is fooled by hype, 
by spin, by marketing, and they don't understand that what they're watching is actually harmful to humanity as a whole. But no one will talk about that kind of shit, right? Because we all have to follow the trends and memes, and God forbid you speak up against a big content creator who seems like there's this goody two-shoes, big smiley, when in reality, it's just a facade. All they care about behind the scenes is how that money keeps rolling in, right? So, how am I different? I'm not a content creator. I'm a content curator. You understand? Allow me to explain. Because someone sent me a really awesome definition of this. Okay? So listen to this. Content curation. What does it mean? Well, content curators pay, play a pivotal role in shaping and enhancing the content that audiences will engage with. Their responsibilities encompass not only the creation of content, but its curation, ensuring that it would remain relevant, informative, and appealing to their target audience. This dynamic role involves not only crafting original content, but also seeking out and selecting existing content that aligns with the brand's messaging and objectives. Content curators are, in essence, architects of a brand's digital narrative, carefully selecting, organizing, and presenting content that tells a compelling story and resonates with an intended audience. <clears throat> so what does that mean? That means I am not making fluff content for the masses. I never intended on that. I never once sat down and said, I'm going to make a YouTube video today just for the sake of pumping out a video that hopefully people will watch and laugh at and make me money. Every piece of content that I try to put out on the internet, I attempt to make it meaningful for my specific audience. And I know that my target audience is not widespread. It's not kids. First of all, it's not kids at all. I don't think that any teenagers would enjoy my content. I'm being honest now. Unless they just want to laugh at the old man who sucks at games. I don't think <clears throat> that teenagers would enjoy my content at all anymore. Back in the day, absolutely. Why? Because my commentary back in the day, excuse me, my commentary back in the day was all immature. It was sex jokes. It was racial jokes. It was stupidity, right? And I did that on purpose because when I started on YouTube, that was the general audience. All right? But over the last 15 years that I've been on YouTube, I've evolved and changed as a person and a creator. I'm not making that kind of content anymore. I've purposefully changed who I am and what I make to have more meaning to my specific audience who actually know who I am and what I stand for. Because as many moronic, mouth-jeweling idiots out there who just jump on a hate bandwagon of viral memeing, the lol cow bullshit that makes no fucking sense when applied to me... I'm not a fucking lol cow. Sorry. You're the lol cow. You created it. You. If you apply it in general to many others. I mean, take a look, I hate to say it, at some of the people who are called the lol cow crew out there. What content do they make and why are they called that? Well, do they have curated content for a specific audience? Or are they just pumping out stuff and trying to ride the coattails of embarrassment, viral embarrassment on the internet for pity box. That's not me. I tell you specifically, don't ever contribute to my content because of haters and hater activity or anything like that. I only want you to contribute to DSP Gaming and DSP Reacts if you like the content I'm putting out. Only like a video if you truly enjoy it. Leave a comment if you want to help me create more curated content specifically for you because that's how I continue to succeed. But I'm not making stuff to just get a, get a buck. If that were the case, I absolutely would have changed many, many years ago. I would have ridden every popular trend. I would have had the fucking my face on every thumbnail. Eh, or, ah, or whatever it means to be, right? With the same fonts, the same tags. I would have collaborated with people. I would have taken sponsorships. I would have been a paid shill. I had all those opportunities laid out in front of me like all the other YouTubers. And I turned it all down. I never did any of that shit on purpose because for me, I want to be rewarded for the work that I do because you like the content I put out that's curated for you and you reward me by supporting it via crowdfunding. That's the relationship we have. That's the difference between me and all those pe other people out there that people compare me to. Look at the shit they put out. Do you think these people enjoy what they're doing? The kind of content they're putting out? A lot of them even said publicly they don't. They only do it because it's all they can do making money. It's pretty sad. 
I enjoy what I do. I love what I do because I actually have a meaningful audience who I can interact with on a daily basis and I don't have to do things I don't like to make a living. Let's put it that way. I can be who I want to be and be okay with myself at the end of the day and the things that I do on stream and I can still make a living doing it. That's the ultimate goal, is it not? I don't harm anyone with the content that I put out. Literally name one person who gets harmed by me sitting here playing video games or having fun conversations with you every day. I don't have to bring people down. I don't have to make drama content. I don't have to be a scumbag to other people, right? Nor do I want to be dragged into other people's nonsense or drama either, right? I, I absolutely positively try to ignore all of that so that I can make positive, fun content for my audience who I curate that content for. That's the difference between me and other content creators out there. I'm not making mainstream content so that it's virally popular for every kid to digest and send me money because they think that I'm some hot shit who dresses up like a fucking G.I. Joe character with a fucking fake mustache and fucking sunglasses and screaming at a fucking camera acting like an idiot. I don't have dyed fucking hair so I look like a cartoon character so that kids will ask their mommy and daddy to buy my merch. I don't fucking put out virally very dangerous content, drama content, slander content, literally only bringing down others for my own personal gain. When other people have a bad day, I don't profit, right? I don't do any of those trends whatsoever. Why? Because they don't mean shit to me. I'm not here just to make content for a buck. I never was. I am a curator who makes content for the audience that I'm trying to speak to and be meaningful to on a daily basis. And if it wasn't, and here's the truth that my haters don't ever want to uh, admit. If this wasn't true, I wouldn't be here today. Because if this wasn't true, if I didn't have an audience that appreciated who I was, the content I put out, and the fact that I curated specifically for them, if my content had no meaning to anyone, I wouldn't be here. Why not? Because I don't do what everyone else does. Again, no drama, not trying to take advantage of children, and I'm not doing lol cow shit and embarrassing myself on fucking stream, taking my shirt off and sucking cucumbers and doing fucking stunts for money. I don't do any of that shit. I just sit here and make content I like. And you guys like it too, and I get to make a living doing it. That's the difference between me and everyone else out there who tries to drag me down into their toxic shit. So I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear a dumb motherfucker out there say that, oh, he's this he's this lol cow group, he's that. I'm nothing. I'm my own man. I'm my own anomaly. One among many who stands alone differently. I will not be brought into your horse shit because you all had to follow the bullshit trends to make a living and yet either had to embarrass yourself or hurt people to fucking do it. I never had to do that. That's something to be proud of. That's something to feel good about. When you're part of this community and you support this content because you like it, you should be like, wow, that's something different that I actually cre helped create via my support. That's why Phil's still here. You know? Not listening to the toxic nonsense of morons who are jealous. Why do you think people try to bring me into their drama all the time? Because they're fucking jealous that I can do this and not be in their bullshit. They're so pissed that they have to do those embarrassing things in order to make a living and they want me to have to go down to that level too. I will never have to go down to that level because I'm not like them. You understand? You're never going to see me acting like that because I don't have to be. <laughs> That's great. Because you guys allow me to do what I love, truly love, rather than, wow, I just have to fucking sit here and do shit I truly hate, but it's the only way I can bring in money. That's pretty fucking sad. Now, here's the truth. I wish them all the best. Every person out there who's malicious, every person out there who's done messed up things, I wish them all the best. I just wish that all these people would look in the mirror and realize how truly harmful they are to themselves, to everyone else around them, to people who watch YouTube, to kids, to all these audiences that basically are being abused and or exploited. I wish they would just realize that because then maybe they would actually try to do something better for themselves, for their audiences, whatever it may be. But sadly, YouTube has become a place where there really is no one caring about that. That anyone can get over for any reason 
and there's no one to say, well, wait a minute, that's really messed up because you actually messed, did this, you hurt this person, you exploited this group, you did this. No one does that. Instead, as long as it rolls in and is popular and gets views and makes money, it must be good. That's completely wrong. There's people on YouTube right now who everyone love, and if you actually analyze them and who they really are and what they really do and the businesses that they're really running, you'd be appalled at who they really are. But no one looks that deep because we all want to similarly feel like we could be like them, right? These big celebrities now who are big popular people, right? That, oh my God, this person had a million view video. That must be a great person. What? <laughs> what? I am here to tell you folks, as someone back in the day who had viral popularity, all right? Viral popularity begets more viral popularity. When you're popular, you're popular for popularity's sake until something bad happens and then you've fallen from grace, correct? So you're Mr. Popular until the day when there's a reason to turn against you and then everyone will virally turn against you because it's just as fun to tear down the person who's popular as it is to jump on the popularity bandwagon. And that's what happened to me, is for a while I was the virally popular YouTuber. And then all of a sudden, This Is How You Don't Play came out and it became, oh, so popular, jump on the negativity bandwagon and crap all over Dark Side Phil. Today, the vast majority of people who don't like me don't even know why. They, they just heard something, right? Oh, I heard something about that guy, right? Do you even know who I am? Did you watch any of my content? Oh, no, I just heard something about him. He's bad news. Wow, so you're an idiot because you didn't actually do anything for yourself. You just listened to stupidity from mouth-jeweling idiots who benefit from toxicity on the internet, you know, like the fucking side-scrollers, complete fucking dunces who didn't do an iota of real research. They just listened to like a thousand haters. I mean, you have to be the dumbest people on the fucking planet to think that way. Sadly, that's how most people think on YouTube today. They don't actually go out of their way to look to see what someone stands for, to see why there would be positive meaning behind a piece of content that someone puts out. Instead, let's just focus on the viral memes because their haters think that they're a bad person. It's insanity. And that's what I mean. That's rampant on YouTube. It's either someone's ultra squeaky clean popular or someone's just a scumbag. Where's the in-between, right? In reality, no one's perfect. In reality, no one has the ability to be immune from mistakes, right? Everyone makes mistakes. Does that mean that someone should be completely buried? That someone should be completely destroyed because they made a few mistakes over the years? Should the bandwagon of hate continue endlessly for the dumbest fucking reasons? Even when some of the reasons have been disproven and aren't real, just move on to another one, right? I mean, it's really messed up how the internet has treated me over the years. And you know what? Again, as long as I'm able to make content for an audience as small as it is, as long as you guys enjoy this content and you continue to support it, I want you to understand that's all I care about. I will continue to be here for you guys and make this meaningful content. And you please can tell you to tell me how much it means to you. And I really appreciate that. As long as we have that back and forth, that curation, right? I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep going, man. You know, the day that I come to stream and... I see absolutely no one who's being positive and no one who seems to be getting anything, you know, good out of what I'm doing is the day I retire. All right? I'm going to make that commitment to you right now. All right? I'm seriously, I'm going to put my hand up and I swear to you right now that the day when I come to a stream and I turn on this stream and no one positive is here saying, this is meaningful, this is fun, I love your content, I, you know, whether it's something I like to listen to every day because I like to listen to news stories or what's going on with you, or I, I like having a fun conversation with you on a live stream, I learned if this game was worth my time, you know, all the things that I do. The day when that goes away and tell me that's no meaning to what I do, I will retire. I commit that right now because that's all I care about. It's not about paying the bills for me. It's about meaning, okay? And the thing is, you guys have told me over and over, we love what you do, even as, as small of an audience as it is that I have. I, I would argue, if you take a look truly at my audience, there's probably 10,000 people on this planet who actually really enjoy my content, but they're not here all the time. There's probably like at all times in a, in a day, maybe a thousand positive people who watch my content and like it, and they, they'll watch the different various things. You know, a few hundred on this video, a few hundred for this other game. They don't all watch everything that I put out. On a given day, you probably get a thousand unique viewers, and then probably, like I said, probably 10,000 people on Earth who actually still like Darkside Phil's content and follow me and wanna, wanna watch what I do. 
And that's enough for me, man, to know that there's that many people who actually really love who I am and what I'm doing and that understand that that's why I push forward through all this nonsense. That that keeps me going. So thank you for that, really. And when you share your stories of what, you know, how what changed something or meant something to you or whatever, that is so cool to me to hear that that's, again, that's why I want to keep doing this. You understand? So thank you for that. But that's why I'm a content curator. I am not a content creator. Remember, I am an independent content creator. I would just like to remind everyone, I am an independent content creator. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm an independent content creator. A content creator is someone who just shovels shit out. A content curator is someone who makes specified content that's meaningful to their specific audience and don't care about mainstream popularity. That's me to a T. That's the definition of who I am. All right? That's what I stand for. Curation, not creation. All right. That's my new slogan. Curation, not creation. There you go. All right. Okay. I got a dollar tip from Snow Carl. I appreciate how consistently you make incredible content. He says, I keep up with your content even though I'm not here all the time. Well, thank you, Snow Carl, for the dollar tip. I know you are. You're probably here under 17 socks, and we all know it. But thank you for the dollar tip. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just like everyone else. We know, we know you're here. We probably talk to you every day, too. <clears throat> I don't know about YouTube notifications. I've literally... Not once in my 15 years using YouTube, using YouTube notifications. I would never use them. They're not reliable. They've never worked. I hear over and over over the years that people, sadly, they subscribe to a channel and they just expect that YouTube will work, and it doesn't. So they don't know when someone's streaming. They don't know when someone's uploading. Listen, unlike most other content creators, I have an incredibly consistent schedule. I'm here six days a week full-time, podcast, gameplay stream, gameplay stream. My schedule is available on my channel page every night, even on my Twitter account slash X account. I am Mr. Consistent. You should not be relying on YouTube notifications to know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. There is numerous ways that you can find this out at any given moment. If I said I'm streaming and I'm not streaming, something serious is happening. Because again, I have work ethic. Again, very different from a lot of other internet content creators who are flaky and they stream whatever they want and they play whenever they want I'm consistent I treat this like a real job because I care about you guys and I want you to have the content that you deserve so I work my ass off to put out that content for you and if I'm not here I know people actually are upset about it like what happened Phil said he was going to be here and he's not I wonder what you know they care and I appreciate that you guys care and wonder what's going on right so I wouldn't say a single person out there should be relying on YouTube uh, notifications. They don't work. They never have. They never will. Look at my schedule. Know I'm here at the same exact times every single day for you guys. Okay? What is it? This piece of hair. It really will look. This, this, where is it? This is it right here. This piece of hair right here. Because look, this hair, I can brush back nicely. And it goes right into place. You see that? What is this? Stop this. I'm going to go scissors. <laughs> Dang, I need like a, a giant hair iron and go, start teasing my hair in the middle of a, a fucking pre-stream here. Anyway, all right, I'm just going to ignore it. It, it, it is, it's like a pet peeve of mine. If I look on camera and I see hair poking out, it kind of bothers me. Anyway, <coughs> okay, so there you go. And I already talked about today's the last week of September. The last week of September. Today's the last day of September. <coughs> so any contributions today would be greatly appreciated to have a strong ending to the month. Um... So thank you in advance to anyone who contributes, whether it's a membership, a gifted membership, a super chat, a super sticker, maybe a super thanks on a video in a comment, or a tip. All would help tremendously, and we have all new animations today. So far, you've only seen the legacy super chat animation. Literally any level of tip, any level of super chat, you will see the new animation. So thank you in advance to anyone who contributes, okay? All right. I got a troll super chat, and I'm just going to read it to entertain it because it is so stupid. They said, how is you putting on glasses or a vest or a hat not acting like a Muppet? So what this guy's talking about is earlier on my uh, pre-stream, which, by the way, I never said Muppet, by the way. But on my pre-stream slash podcast today, I talked about how I'm different. <clears throat> I don't play a character on my streams, right? That it's me. It's genuinely me giving you my opinions, my thoughts on a game when I play it. 
you know, I don't play dress up, I don't dye my hair, I don't put on sunglasses and a fake mustache and a fucking vest to look like I'm a fucking fake reject G.I. Joe. You know, I don't look like a cartoon character with frosted hair and shit like that. But people idiotically say things like, oh, but on your streams when you hit a, a, a support goal, you put on like a vest or hat. Do you not see the difference? Someone literally who plays a character to entertain children, to try to attract children to their streams so that they can beg their parents to contribute as opposed to someone who's a genuine gamer who games because they love video games and likes to share that honest experience with their audience. If you don't understand the difference between someone who actively acts up like a cartoon character to try to get children to watch their content versus what I do, you're a moron and you don't deserve anyone's time. You're just a fucking idiot and you need help. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. I got a $6.66 tip uh, from an anonymous tipper who says, cheers. And with that, we have hit 100 bucks, which means you guys get to vote on a hat. Now, obviously, whatever hat I put on, I will voice act like a cartoon character of appropriately for the hat, right? <laughs> right. Of course. I mean, literally, when people say stuff like that to me, it's like, do you not understand that when you say that, you just show how stupid you are? You, you think that watching one of uh, their streams versus me is identical. Have you never seen one of their fucking streams where they're continuously acting up, acting like a cartoon, screaming, overact, exaggerating, acting like a character, and it's the only way they can get attention, right? Versus someone who just is being real. <laughs> you know? A little different. By the way, I was around way before any of them, and I'll be there longer than them as well. I'll be much smaller, but I'll still be here. Okay. <clears throat> now it's time to vote for a hat. So let's see. Which, oops, which hat is RE4 best? Um, let's see here. Oh, let's see, man, we wore a lot of hats recently. So it's actually kind of hard to pick one we haven't worn. I would say, <clears throat> the we haven't worn a Viking hat. We haven't worn the Los Santos cap recently. We haven't worn, uh, the, the Ryu headband. And we haven't worn the digital camo ranger hat recently. There you go. <clears throat> would I be up for buying a Halloween hat? Uh, I don't know what I would buy. The thing is, you know, I'm going to be wearing a costume on Halloween. Um, I don't know what kind of a Halloween-themed hat you guys would think of. <clears throat> uh -oh, what was that? All right. Good place to split the part. I hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough. I'll be back with more shortly. All right, we're splitting apart, everyone. Thank you for being a great audience today. And uh, we'll continue on in just a sec. And uh, thank you for your support here on the final day of September. I really appreciate that. It will help things a lot. And I uh, hope you are enjoying the playthrough. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's continue. All right, so I died. It was very embarrassing. Now I must recover. Enough of this. Still after me, huh? They're pushing me! Ah, oh, they're bullying me! I should take an egg. Just eat an egg immediately. Oh, yummy! It's gonna crack it. I'll oh, just drink it right out of the shell. That's a good pick me up. The iris allows you to see clues that are almost invisible to the naked eye. What the? I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. You don't know he's coming, right? I wasted an explosive shot on them because they didn't tell you that he was coming. And then... I get it. Like, it seems like a fun fight. But I need resources. They didn't give me, like, the good stuff to use against the parasite. Right? They really didn't. So... Alright, next time around... We'll take a fresh perspective at it. The thing is, I'm out of time. I can't keep going. This could take, you know, a while. It could be a hard fight. Um, I like it. I do like the DLC. 
Haven't played Resident Evil in months. I'm enjoying it. Hope that you guys are enjoying the playthrough so far. And next time around, when we continue, more Resident Evil 4 separate ways. Now, some people have said it's five hours long. I don't think so. I mean, we played for three hours. We didn't even beat Chapter 3 yet, right? So, I don't think so. I think this will probably be two to three streams for us. So, probably at least another two to three sessions to wrap it up. Um, but I am enjoying it. Thank you, everyone, chilling. Thanks to those who supported. Uh, great stream overall today. Until next time in a few days, thanks for watching. See you then, and more coming. We'll get El Gigante next time. Peace out. All right. All righty, everybody. Yes, that is it. Uh, I hope that you guys had a good time with me today. Uh, I certainly had a good time. Let's close this. And uh, we continue next time with more. Now, when is next time? Tuesday for this week. And thank you. You guys saw three of the... No, you saw the $5, $10, $20, and $50 new animations for tips today. The only one you haven't seen is the $100 animation for Halloween. Um, you also saw several of the Super Chat animations for Halloween. So thank you guys for those. I appreciate that. And uh, I will upload and I'll be back tonight with Starfield. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy the break. Peace out. See you later. And thank you. Tipping me helps me more than anything.